Hey everyone, welcome back to the Food Network. Today we're going to be picking up where we left off in last week's buffet. As you all know, this program moves a mile a minute. Between this one and Amberlynn, I can barely keep up. I'm out of breath. (sighs) Who would have thought that these two put their treadmills on incline? So first things first, they did get married. Mm -hmm. I think maybe last Monday they took this photo. We can see Sala's silverish, possibly white gold appearing ring with matching Apple Watch wristband. Mm, you think he coordinated that? Complimented with Foodie's yellow gold hula hoop. Now, I have no idea what is in the background of this photo. Looks like we have some type of beaded bracelets, a candle of some sort, and a box of Versace cologne you'd buy at a department store. Neat little display here. Um, This photo, to me, just radiates genuine happiness, in my opinion. But you know what? That's all of the internet, right? Every photo you see online is authentic. Everyone is rich, happy, having fun, and having the time of their lives. You, you are the odd one out. Mm -hmm. You hearing me? Everyone on Instagram and Twitter posting photos about how happy and successful they are. They most definitely are, 100%. You should try to keep up with them. So before we mosey on into the honeymoon, I did want to take a quick look at a video food threw up last Monday. It's titled, My Travel Experience as a Fat Canadian Going to Kuwait. When Dr. Seuss wrote the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, I don't think he had this scenario in mind. I want to do a series of videos where I'm just talking about things that I know you guys want to know about, specifically pertaining to this travel journey, because I do see a lot of comments, uh, people wondering, being my size, as big as I am, how did you travel to the Middle East? One of the hot, especially to one of the hottest places on the planet, Kuwait. If you've watched my channel, you've been with me for a while, you've seen my past videos, you've seen my life up until now. So especially somebody like me, it's very shocking for someone like me to do something like that. I just want to say that I think this is a lesson that I don't think that people really understand that what people show you online is just what they show you online. I don't think that people really understand fully everything that's going on inside of me. And that's, you're not meant to. <laughs> These are things that I keep personal in my life. Um, and there are, I have shared a lot of things with you guys. Yes, I have been very, very open. I'm going to be open to what I feel comfortable with being open with. So anyway, my point with all that was, um, I think that people don't really fully know me. They don't really know that I have this sense of burning desire to just sometimes experience life in a way I never thought that I would ever do it. And I, that's how I like to live my life, kind of spontaneously, just, you know, just crazy life. I love it. I love having a crazy life, right? So Foodie here tells us that she wants to start a series on her channel where she answers question or goes into detail about what her audience is curious about. Is it just me or do these series Foodie and Amber Lynn launch never last very long? Remember the 500 pound girl series? Pepperidge Farm remembers. She also makes a note in this clip that it's pretty hot in Kuwait. Heat and food don't mix. Well, they do, but not with this food. Chantal walking around the Middle East is more like a vanilla cone in a microwave. It doesn't really mix, but her air-conditioned body audi audi is not used to an environment like this. Y'all want to talk about culture shock? The bridge of her nose and thighs would like to have a discussion on moisture shock. Lastly here, Foodie tells us she has a burning desire to live life to the fullest. Now, this is actually a very interesting point because I think that she is emphasizing here that she doesn't want to just be an apartment potato. She isn't satisfied with having food delivered every day, screaming at people on the internet, and having no fun plans to do stuff in life. This is the kind of character development I like to see in a show like this. I really like it when girls in girl world talk about their passion and ambition. Similarly to Amber Lynn, she talks about wanting to change her life around, travel more, or even move. Who remembers when Amber Lynn was going to move this season? What happened with that? Point being here, you got to have an end game and want something in life. Otherwise, what are you telling yourself every day to stay motivated? I would love to hear more about what both Foodie and Amber Lynn want out of life. I think it helps me, the viewer, understand them better as to the meaning behind the never-ending weight loss journeys. Uh, or just a reminder, I'm a person who has come from a very sedentary lifestyle. Uh, I'm from Canada and I not use, I don't, I'm not a person who loves the heat. I'm not a person who loves activity and all of those things that I have to do here. But I am a person who does love to challenge myself when I feel the time is right. I have done that in my past and I'll get into that now.
So just a bit of a history with flying. Um, I know that flying fat is a huge topic for people who are overweight. It's a big anxiety. Traveling when you're overweight, uh, doing anything when you're uh, excessively overweight is extremely difficult uh, for a lot of people, including myself. And it makes traveling extra difficult, of course. All right, so just reiterating here, Foodie isn't someone who likes the heat or activity, but she enjoys challenging herself. Now, what does that mean exactly? I think that means if the prize at the end of the tunnel here is worth it, she'll endure less than ideal conditions to attain it. No Walmart scooting to the end of this tunnel. You're walking, girl. She begins to get into the discussion of her weight as it relates to flying and getting around in general. Let's lend our ears a little bit more to hear what Foodie thinks things about flying while fat. Over the years, I my weight increased, increased, increased over the years. And it got to the weight that it was, which was very excessive, um, especially for health and everything else like that. Um, you guys know I'm a person who's all about body positivity, loving who you are regardless of your shape, size, whatever. But um, when it comes to damaging your health, that's a bit uh, of a different issue for me. But regardless, I do still think that people, while they're dealing with their health issues, have a right to be comfortable and happy traveling and living life. And not feeling like a complete outcast. But um, so uh, I did travel to Cuba. That was the first trip um, in April where I was feeling some anxiety. Okay, I'm going to say I was as terrified as I've probably been thinking about a flight. Uh, I was, you know, I would, in preparation, I would like obsessively just look for seats that, you know, maybe a window seat, maybe at the back, no one will sit beside me. I was hoping, you know, am I going to have to buy two seats? Just all these anxieties were flooding in my brain. I'm getting, and people were, you need two seats, you need two seats. Don't, don't, don't put yourself on someone else. Don't, you know, don't take up space. Don't take up space. No, I'm going to tell you, never be afraid to take up space. Take up space. All right. Enough. All right, so Foodie makes a pretty bold claim here that definitely raised my eyebrows when I first heard it. She's very body positive, loving who you are regardless of your shape or size. Not only that, she said that she's all about it. I now want to walk in the blistering heat back to a clip from a few months ago in which Foodie went off on her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend, Dee Dee. Now just remember, y'all, all about body positivity and inclusiveness. This bitch has the fucking nerve to call me 400 pounds when she also weighs 400 pounds and she's six foot five as size 13 feet hands the size of Natter's fucking whole body. And you're going to come for me? Really? And you're going to come for me. Okay. Let's keep listening to the audio. Let's keep listening. At least I don't look like I just drank five bottles of wine every day. Hi, Natter. Ew. Go fucking apply to be in a horror movie, okay? Thank you. Now, I think Foodie has used up all of the available F-words I'm allotted per video. The point of me including this little clip isn't to draw a comparison and put it in all of your faces. I think it's pretty evident by now that in girl world, up is down, left is right, and calories are a unit of fun, not energy. I more so included this clip to emphasize Foodie's commitment to change. Now, this was last season, and she's made it very clear that she's a changed person. Will moving to the Middle East to be with the love of her life clear up some of the darker side of her thoughts? Only time will tell. It's hard to give food the benefit of the doubt here, though, because as she recently said about Amber Lynn, once someone shows you who they are, believe them. 400 pounds? Bitch, what do you think you weigh? You have the, you have size 13 feet. People literally think you're trans and you're going to come for me? Nothing wrong with being trans, if you're trans. All right, what else here? Now, one is a genuine disability. Unless you're slicing a little bit larger of a slice of the pie for them when you go to book your ticket, I think they'll do everything in their power to cram as many people on a flight as possible. So I got on the plane, and my seat was, like, way at the back. And I heard someone say, in the, the stewardess say, like, we have a full plane. So I kind of like oh, looked at the seat beside me and I thought, oh no, 12 hours with somebody that I don't know and like maybe a strange person. I don't know. So, but I knew it was a possibility. So, but I had a window seat. That was the best thing for me because I love looking out the window. Um, and of course, right at the back near the lavatory because I want to avoid just having to walk down long aisles through people. Um, maybe that is a little bit of an insecurity. I just, I don't know. But I just, yeah. Um, 
Anxiety sets in when Foodie is notified her flight to Kuwait is full and that she will be needing to sit next to someone during the journey. She makes a mention here that she deliberately selected a window seat in the back of the plane so that she can avoid walking down the aisles during the flight should she need to use the lavatory. I think we're seeing here Foodie gave this journey some thought prior to booking it. I think she's making every free accommodation for herself readily available so that if things go sideways, she's still has some saving grace. I think she was smart to make all of these accommodations for herself. I would much rather someone in Foodie's position set themselves up in a way that works for them instead of doing the bare minimum and having everyone else around her adjust and accommodate her. Flying isn't fun, y'all. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It's boring. Most people just want it to be over with. I think people in these situations become extra critical of their surroundings because they're already anxious to just have it over with. So props to Foodie to giving this some thought. Airplane bathrooms. This is again just one thing. If you're a bigger person, you'll understand. Airplane bathrooms are so tiny, but yeah, it like freaked me out. I was like, oh my god, what if I get stuck? Or I don't know. It's just like all these irrational thoughts just poured into my brain. So, but because I was at the back near the lavatory, um, I actually got to talk to a lot of nice people because um, I actually made friends with a nice Iranian woman, and she was waiting to use the bathroom. There was like a queue. People would queue near my seat, and I would just talk to people. <laughs> so, yay, bathroom beating. So once I had my seatbelt extender in and once I heard that I was waiting, I was waiting nervously looking like, okay, look, the suspense. Is somebody going to come and sit in my seat? You know, everyone's moving down the aisles. And sure enough, um, finally the pilot was like um, all passengers on board and nobody was sitting beside me. So so I actually didn't purchase two seats. I, I never purchased two seats. I just, I'm okay with the seatbelt extender. And I actually um, had the seat to myself because it wasn't a full plane. So I was actually really lucky. I got to put my leg up and just rest. And I actually, one thing being bigger and especially in the abdomen area, um, I find is a problem on airplanes for me is the table tray. I'm not able to actually fully full, uh, fold down the tray in front of me. It hits my stomach a little bit. So what I did was I actually just used the tray from the, the empty chair and just used that as my mealtime tray, which was fine. Christmas came early. Foodie did not have to sit next to someone during her 12-hour flight to Kuwait. She got that extra room she preferred to have for herself for the long journey. Also here, she communicates to us some of her additional worries, such as potentially getting stuck in the bathroom and not being able to use the tray table attached to the seat in front of her. Luckily, because the seat next to her was not occupied, she was able to make herself more comfortable. She got to put her feet up and utilize the the vacant seats table tray because the one in front of her would not comfortably stay down for her to eat and drink off of. I think this goes to show for someone like Foodie, it probably all comes down to personal preference. To me, it kind of sounded like she needed the extra room and accommodations that come with the second seat for a flight as long as this one. I know the idea of paying for two seats isn't the most alluring, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, she ended up looking out, so good for Foodie. Since arriving in the Middle East and marrying the love of her life, Foodie has tossed up several vlogs on her channel showing off Kuwait, accompanied by Salah. The two have also begun to live stream almost every day now, and there have been a lot of interesting moments on screen we'll get into in the coming episodes. Now, my parting question for you all, is this the dream romance Foodie had in mind prior to leaving her life behind in Canada? Will this be the long-term match made in heaven for the two? Only time will tell. I would now like to thank you all for tuning in for today's Food Network update. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a thumbs up and some of your thoughts in the comments. Enjoy your day, party people!